Hello everyone, welcome back to the United Stand. I'm here outside Old Trafford, the home of the Carabao Cup winners, ahead of West Ham in the FA Cup. The next trophy, as Ten Hag would call it. We came back, we celebrated for what, a couple of hours, and we're back to business, back to training, back to the day job. Ten Hag press conference yesterday, he was quite clear on his mindset and everything that's going forward now for United in terms of the players, their attitudes, and how they're going to approach this massive fixture list which is still massive even though there's one cup out of the way we've done that we've seen it we've seen it all we've won well we've won one not won everything yet but it is still open and Ten Hag wants to win everything he's made that very very clear in terms of players looking ahead towards the West Ham game who might be fit? Are we mentally ready? Yes, we are. I think it was Simon Peach of the Mirror that asked that question in the press conference. How are we physically? Are, who is available? Is there anyone? Is there any casualties from the cup final? Are United going to have a full bill of health? No. We never do. I don't think any team ever does. He shut down the questions regarding Anthony Martial. Still not fit. When, if, spots, maybe he's with that player. I do not know. I've kind of given up on him ever being available for any game. If he is available, it's going to be a bonus, plain and simple right now. Uh, Luke Shaw and Fred are possibly absentees for the West Ham game. No, that came out of the press conference yesterday. And I think uh, Fred, not co not too concerned. So it's uh, Mark, uh, McTominay, both available and fit now. So in terms of uh, covering that area, not too bad. Shaw, you've got Malassia. And then you've got options there at centre-back. Do you risk the FA Cup and West Ham getting a, a morale boosting 4-0 win against Nottingham Forest at weekend? and actually going into this game with possibly Maguire and Lindelof again alongside Malassia who isn't that experienced alongside them centre-backs Wambazaka or Dallo at right back I would say Wambazaka starts again I think that's the way he will go with it obviously De Gea in goal so plenty of options and cover at the back definitely to freshen things up you could say there's three or four players there you could change the whole back four and still feel quite confident. I mean, I'm not as confident without our two World Cup winning centre-backs for Ran and Martinez. If it was Lindelof and Maguire, I think we do struggle. I think transition struggles, and I think the understanding that Martinez and Varane have got with Casemiro in front of them is one that we'd have to trouble, a hurdle we'd have to try and get over if it is, in fact, Maguire and Lindelof. When the teams are dropped, I think there will be an air of acceptance as well as disappointment, I feel, on this one. We know what Ten Hag's like in terms of resting players. He, doesn't really do it. He gives them a little bit here and there. Is the FA Cup as important as the Carabao Cup? Because we went into a Nottingham Forest second leg being 3 0 up and played as strong as it could get. Are we mentally and physically a bit more worn out after a final victory at weekend? No. Bonus we do have is that West Ham obviously played at weekend and are playing a double game week as well. That's one thing we can look at. Will they try and freshen things up after the emotion of winning a, a game 4-0? Or actually winning a game for West Ham, that was big enough. But well, I look at it from the United side of things now and Ten Hag and how he's approached it. Don't expect too many changes. I've said wholesale in the past on these fan vlogs uh, and these road trips, expected big changes and they've not come. We have options and I think this is where he can be a bit savvy with it now because uh, as, yeah, the victory train just rolls past there, that's a good sign. Always something on these uh, these road trip videos and these previews. We'll wait for the uh, bollards to go down in a minute, no doubt as well, with a big delivery coming in. Uh, but no, looking at it, we can be a bit savvy now. So if you think it's like, right, should we make wholesale changes? Are wholesale changes that bad? Wholesale changes right now are what I just described at the back. You could literally bring in four new players at the back and still feel quite comfortable. Shaw's missing. In the past, you'd be going, oh, a bit gutted. Then you go, hang on, we've got Malassia. And you go, right, OK, Fred's out. He's been playing really well. That's all right, we've got Sabitzer. And we can even mix that up with McTominay more. And then you're thinking, right, do we need to freshen things up up front? You've got Garnacho, who didn't even start. Or get off the bench against Newcastle in the final. Sancho had, what, 20 minutes? Fresh, fresh. There's loads of options open to United right now in terms of mixing it up a little bit. But I think he will go maybe two or three changes. I think the enforced ones, I think we'll miss Shaw and we'll miss Fred. Uh, out of the tier. I was like, not missing Fred. I don't think he's like a key, key part, even though he has been brilliant for his standards recently. I do believe that we won't have Shaw in the team, we won't have Fred. Uh, if they are any sort of risk or not fully fit, then we're not going to see them in the team with Ten Hag. That's how I see it. And he will feel totally comfortable with the players coming in fresh. Well, last year, as, as 
has been perfect when he's been in this season. Whether it be right back or left back, he's been excellent. So no issue there for Ten Hag confidence wise or disruption wise. He knows the system and he's played pretty much with everyone that's going to be in that starting lineup and knows how it works. So Bitsa has adapted to the Premier League quicker than anyone I've seen, especially coming in in January and how quickly he's hit the ground running. It's been breath of fresh air and an absolute bonus to Ten Hag in terms of how he has adapted that quick and how he can come straight into the team for moments like this. So yeah, Fred missing, Shaw missing, no issues there. And I do think we'll see changes up top. Uh, I think Anthony will get rested. I think Sancho will come in. Uh, could possibly... I, I can't see him resting Rashford. That's the one I'm not sure about. I mean, Rashford looked like he was blowing out of his ass. to be honest, at the end of that game. He looked knackered, as you'd expect. As you'd expect all the players. Even Bruno looked knackered. But we know Bruno never gets rested. He is our captain. And I think Ten Hag just looks at him as the mainstay and will be playing. No reason to rest Casemiro. He's obviously had his rest through this month already and I think will probably be the fittest player in the squad right now. I think the balance of him being suspended and playing minimal games here and there is definitely going to help us when occasions like this come around. I think he'll be raring to go. Fresh off the back of his uh, spot in the team of the year as well. So, oh, looking really good for Casemiro. And some, in some quarters, I've been calling it the signing of the summer in Casemiro. The leader, the man, the engine, the everything that is Manchester United. And the reason I went into Sunday's final thinking we are going to win and was fully confident of that. The likes of Varane and, and Casemiro in this team have changed everything. The spine of United's team right now, when you go through from Varane and Martinez into Casemiro and Bruno, we just miss that one number nine and right on cue here's a van waiting to get through the bollard so excuse the noise when it does kick in in a minute it's like they just wait for us to come down here and do our video and then let's roll up i think the stewards love it as well I like to come out and press the remote and get a bit excited and feel like they've actually got something to do uh but yeah look <laughs> the uh it is category A game again. The uh, ballards are up, the stands are up for the West Ham fans. Bigger allocation, obviously, for the FA Cup. So the West Ham fans will be coming, like I said, buoyant from the weekend's win. In the numbers, I think maybe 5,000, 6,000. I'll have to double check that, but usually on FA Cup day, they'll get the full top tier. So it's going to be vocal. It's going to be noisy. noise there. The atmosphere should be good. And with everything going on with United at the moment, it should lead into a pretty good game. Both teams on a bit of a high from the previous weekend so yeah let's see David Moyes coming back here to Old Trafford his record garbage I mean to be honest he didn't win many years as a United manager either so his record as an opposition manager is appalling here I don't think he's won I'm pretty certain that's the record I remember talking about it earlier on the season when he came here in the league but David Moyes not one win at Old Trafford as an opposition manager yeah, he's only a couple behind his actual uh, winning record as Man United manager then as well, isn't it? <laughs> God, I don't like him, honestly. I've, it's not because of him and who he is. I just didn't like him as a United manager. He's the wrong man at the wrong time for this football club. And I think he set us back about five years in what he did with the squad and how he changed everything here. But yeah, he is where he is and that's his standard West Ham. They are going to cause us problems. We are, they always do, it is a tough game, Declan Rice always turns up here at Old Trafford and has a good game so expect him to play well. Maybe it's a, a little bit of an audition for Mr Declan Rice, maybe for the summer, you don't know, maybe. He says he loves it here, he loves playing here. Maybe we could see him standing up alongside Casemiro next season as the understudy for the great man when he does, when he does leave Manchester United. Caution, here we go. As usual. Yeah, can you see the steward in the background there as well? I'm sure he's giggling. There's someone there. I'm not going to turn around and give him his uh, and give him his moment, but yeah, uh, that's where we stand in terms of this now. I think the excitement of the Carabao Cup has sort of taken over everything. I think as soon as the game starts building up later, I think the reality will kick back home of yes, we have got work to do. It is still only February, and and you calculate it, there's a possible 25 more games to play this season. We're already at 40 now. 
So yeah, you could say we're not even two thirds of the way through the season yet. This is how crazy it is. We're picking up silverware and we've played so many games and it looks like it's a game every three days all the way through. I'll tell you when that international break comes at the end of March, I think we'll all be taking a bit of a break and having a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a moment just to uh, let everything sink in that has happened over the last few months because it has been pretty epic here at Manchester United. Just to see the scenes of the staff that we know well on TV there celebrating with the players from the experiences that we we've had with the club in press conferences and access we've had this season just feels really good it feels brilliant and it feels brilliant to be a United fan with the connection we've got with this place again now uh, yeah we will be hopefully competing at Wembley again we are two more games away from getting back to the famous stadium in the semi-final of the FA Cup and then hopefully a final as well I know it'd be a little bit warm and it was at the Carabao Cup it was bloody freezing at weekend anyway guys that is your roundup the road trip done and dusted hopefully I'll be talking to you later on outside Old Trafford talking about a United win and looking forward to another quarter final draw as this season rolls on and all its glory like share and subscribe to the United Stand everybody cheers for watching as always I'll see you later on celebrating United's win hopefully hopefully it's that's the one in it yeah it's not that that's perfect that's like hopefully in it yeah we get it anyway guys I'll see you later